Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who we reverence and double honors to the elder apostles of Great Moso. Okay, that teaches truth well, and that continue to teach us truth well. And to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters still listening and learning. And that's who we're out here for, the hopeful elect. Without further ado, this lesson will be edifying. It's a hot, hot, hot day. Okay, we just don't see what the day may bring forth. It's going to flow with the spirit. And I want to start with Corinthians. Let this go past. Let Satan go past. Alright, we're going to start off with 1 Corinthians 14 chapter. Follow after charity. What's charity? Love. True love. That's what we're following after. Why? Because Yahweh Shai was that example. Of what? True charity. Agape. That's what we're following after. Charity. Spiritual gifts. That's what we're following after. Excuse me. Camera's acting up. Shit. Bear me just a minute. Camera's acting up. Bear me just a minute. I knew that was going to happen after a while. So what are we supposed to be following after? Spiritual gifts. That's what we follow after. Alright? The spiritual gifts. Which Yahabasha increases us with. Alright? Bear me just, I lost the page. Lost the page now. Here it is. This is what? First Corinthians 14 chapter. Follow after spiritual gifts. This is what we're supposed to want. This is what we're supposed to be thriving for. Spiritual gifts. Alright? But rather that you may prophesy. So it says rather that you prophesy. Because these are all gifts. And prophecy is one of the major gifts. So rather that what? You prophesy. That's what we're out here to do. Prophesy the destruction of this kingdom. Prophesy the destruction of your world. Okay. And the coming of our world. But rather that you may prophesy. So that's what we really... And the, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. You can't make yourself. All right. So you can't make yourself a prophet. Okay. Who's that? But given to you to be a prophet, are you worthy? Okay. This is what the Lord's will. It's not of our will. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. All right. So if you're speaking in the old man tongue, which is what? Speaking in tongues, which is unknown to those that don't understand what you're saying. They don't understand what, what, what you're saying, except those that can comprehend that language that you're speaking. Speaking not unto men, but unto the Most High. For no man understandeth him, how about in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries, right? 
But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men, to edification. So when you're prophesying, you're not prophesying in tongues. You're speaking in what? Plain English. You're not prophesying in Hebrew. Okay? So what? That's why people can what? They can understand. If it's been given to them to understand. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. That's why prophecy is so important. Okay? And that prophecy is for your edification. To let you know what's about to happen. And exhortation, exhortation and comfort. So these things are for exhortation and the comfort of the saints. That's why we do what we do, to comfort you, okay? And to comfort ourselves, okay? That's why we do what we do, all right? And he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, because you're only going to be edifying yourself and that person that understands that language. Right? Yeah, I think the intense... But he that prophesieth, edifieth the church. The whole church you're edifying. Okay? Because you're not speaking in tongues. Not to say speaking in tongues don't edify. It does, but it only edif it's only going to edify to the, to, to the one example you're speaking in Portuguese. If the person only speaks Portuguese or French, that's going to be edifying to them. It's not going to be edifying to everybody else because they don't know what language you're speaking in. All right? I would that you all speak with tongues, speak with tongues, different languages. But rather that you prophesy. So that's the major thing. That which I would rather that we prophesy. If it's in you, because not everybody's a prophet. You have different gifts in this truth. That's why you got to, guess what, you got to know your lot. Know your measure, know your lot. Know what you can do, know what you can't. All right? Except, for he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, so we need an interpreter for that language you're speaking in. The church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? So it's not going to edify you as much. Because it ain't being spoken in a language that you understand. So the common language is what? English. Just like the old language, what was it? Latin, that was considered the, the language of what? The learnt man. The language of what the known world it was latin so today what's the common language english because people can understand it all right so bear me just a minute even, even things without life given sound whether pipe or harp except they give a distinction in the sounds how shall it be known what is pipe or harp and even with music, it has a particular distinction, has a particular sound. Okay, and we're piping onto you right now. All right, but this word, this, this is a song. We're piping onto you right now. It's a beautiful song. All right. Except they give a distinction in sound, how can it be known what is piped or harp? But if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, and we're not supposed to be giving you that uncertain sound. We're giving you a certain sound. We're letting you know what's happening. We're not, we're not blowing that trumpet uncertainty. We're letting you know what's about to happen through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh All right? Who shall prepare himself for the battle? Because when you're blowing the trumpet, you're preparing for war. So we're blowing that trumpet and we're preparing you for this war. This final World War Three. Okay, and it's a certain sound. We're not sugarcoating anything. We're not telling you smooth things. We're blowing that trumpet, giving you a certain sound. Right? It 
So likewise, he except he utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. So when we're breaking down the scriptures, we're, we're telling you things easy to be understood. We're not speaking in tongue. We're not speaking in other languages. It's that it's needful for the body, but in terms of prophecy, you can't do that, old brother. People won't understand. How should it be known what is spoken for you speak into the air? So now let's go to Amos 3. This is Amos 3. All right. Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And that trumpet is being blown right now. It's being blown in what? All the dif different cities. All the different states. Right now I'm blowing this trumpet what? In the city of London. All right. So these trumpets are being blown. Which is the word. And the scripture says, Lift up thy voice like a trumpet to show my people their transgressions. So that's what we're doing. We're blowing that trumpet. And we're not giving that uncertain sound. We're giving a certain sound. Bear me just a minute. I think it's breaking. I have to get this sorted out. We're giving you a certain sound. We're not giving you an uncertain sound. Blowing that trumpet night and day. That's a true definition of a watchman. We're warning you of what's about to happen. We're warning you of the impending danger, the calamity, okay? And telling you, if you don't repent, you're gonna get caught up in all this destruction. All right? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? So when we're blowing this trumpet in the ancient world, you were supposed to be afraid. You were supposed to be shooken up. So we're showing you the people, the Lord's left them asleep, left them in that dead state. You should have thousands of people, hundreds of people surrounding me, wanting to hear what I've got to say. But it's not meant for everybody. It's only meant for a remnant. A remnant of our nation. Shall there be an evil in the city? And the Lord Jehovah shall have not done it. And you've seen these evils happen every single day. And who do you think's doing that? It's the Lord Jehovah Yahweh. He's doing these evils. He's bringing these calamities, he's bringing these tornadoes, earthquakes, pestilences. The Lord is doing that. All right? Bear me just a minute. Isaiah. 45 and 7 I form the light so we see how shine that's forming the light light represents day light represents good light represents understanding we see how shine that's doing that and create darkness the darkness you see the ignorance you see the wickedness you see Yahweh has created that for the necessary evils. I, the Lord, do all these things. So it's Yahweh Shai that does all these things. It's not a coincidence. He controls all manner of things you see around you. Okay? Everything. No such thing as coincidence. Okay? He controls the kings, he controls everything. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 21, okay? Proverbs 21. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord Yahweh Shai. So what does it mean by the king's heart? King's mind. 
It's in the, it's in the hands of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. So the king, the Rothschilds, bear me just a minute. I feel like a spider's climbing on me. So the king's heart, what's the king's heart? His mind. Okay, he's every thought. It's in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So there's no such thing as free will. No such thing. The elites are being controlled. As much as they think they're doing their own thing, no. They're being controlled. Everybody's controlled. Everybody's a puppet on Yahweh Shai's uh, in, in Yahweh Shai's hand. Everybody. That free will that free will doctrine is really of Satan. Okay. Even when you're driving your car, it's your Habesha that's controlling you. It's your Habesha that's navigating you to that next destination. As the rivers, he turneth it whatsoever he will. What? The mind. So it's the Habesha that works on the mind of the rulers. Right? Speaking of rulers, the rulers of this world are going to be taken down. And who are they going to be taken down by? Yahweh Shai. Okay. That's why, guess what? We don't need to take up arms. I see a video with um, Sakari. Okay, with the rap video. Trying to bring the world into the truth. Okay. Got a strap. Okay, why would you need a strap for? Huh? Why would you need a strap? Yeah, guess what? We're strapped with the truth. This is the strap right here. Why would you need a why would you need a gun? Unless you don't believe in the might and power of Yahweh Shai. We don't need that. That's the spirit of the world. Okay. We're strapped with the truth. This is what we're strapped with. Okay, and we got our lines strapped as well. That's the only strappings we have. All right, that's the only strappings we have. You understand? You got your 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 the rap videos calling on the you have the name of Yahweh Shai, but you got a strap due to that amendment of America that you're allowed to have a due to them laws. But guess what? But that's not what's going to save you. How carnal can you be? That's how you know they're with them same zealots. They were them same zealots. Alright? They were trying to take matters into their own hands. What did Yahweh Shai say to Peter? You live by the sword, you die by the sword. There's only one way, and that's spiritual intervention. Through Yahweh Shai. We ain't gonna do this by our own might. Okay? We're gonna get out of this through Yahweh Shai. Spiritual intervention. Get some scriptures on that. Bear me just a minute. Trying to take you got showing people your strap. What 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 if that what if you fire that strap and it backfires on you? Huh? What happens if that happens it backfires on you? And that could happen, why? Because you never put your trust in your other shine. These things could happen. Right? Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. How silly can you be? And the Sakari was a very, very carnal group. They were a very base group. Group of men. That were trying to push Yahweh Shai's hand. When Yahweh Shai was on the scene, they were trying to push his hand. Remember, you had all these different sects. You had, you had the Zealots, Maccabees, Pharisees, Sadducees. Yahweh Shai was not a part of that, none of these sects. None. Okay. Bear me just a minute. Let's get straight into it. Let's go to Psalms. 
see if we can find them. There it is. This is Psalms 44. I'm around verse 6. Let's go to 5. Through thee will we push down our enemies. So, how are we going to push down our enemies? How are we going to destroy our enemies? Through Yahweh Shai. That's how we're going to push down our enemies. Okay? So, you're not pushing down something, it's underneath you. So, we're going to do that by the word. We're not going to do that by our own might. We're not going to succeed by our own might. So, we will push down our enemies. Through thy name, Salakia. So through the name of Yahweh Shai, that's how we're going to push down our enemies. And we will tread them under. We will rise up against us. So we're through the net, and that's how important that's how important the name is. That is how important the name is. So through that name, we will push down our enemies. Alright? We will have our enemies under subjection. Verse 6, for I will not trust in my swords. Alright, I'll keep doing that. For I will not trust in my bow. We're not going to trust in our bow. Because King David, yeah, he had a bow and arrows. Back then the men had arrows, had particular victuals. Okay. I will not trust in my bow. A bow is a weapon. Okay. A bow, that, well, that's, that's like unto a gun. The ancient guns were what? The bows. But you have what? The archery. So we, we were not trusting what? The bow. Neither shall my sword save you. Neither is a sword going to save us. Because King David, he also had a sword. Remember men of war back then? Okay. How did King David take down Goliath? He took him down with the words. That's how Goliath was taken down. It was with the words. Did he use a slingshot? Yes. But that was established by the words. That's what it was established by. That's how your life was taken down. By the words. And through King David having trust in the words. That's why when he had the armor put on him, he said he has not proved it. You know? King David was not a man of putting all this armor on him. So it was. It didn't feel right. Okay? Nothing is impossible when you have faith. But that has saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. Through what? Through the words. Not through our own might. So that's how we're going to take down this man. We're going to take him down through the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's it. Okay? We ain't going to take him down by our own man. We're not a part, and that's we're not a part of no black militia group. Okay, we're not a part of no group that takes up arms. We don't believe in taking up arms. We believe in what spiritual intervention through these words, and that's it. Let's go to Corinthians. Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Something I'm looking for. Bear me just a minute. Because Yahweh Shai, he's dealing with the spiritual man. And a spiritual man ain't got a result to carnality. Are you going to take down Esau with the sword? Which, that was his blessing. How are you going to take Esau down? Because you got a people that think like that, they're carnal. Yeah, let's all gather together. Let's gather up arms, let's build a community. Bro, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. 
The only way we're going to win this battle is through spiritual intervention. And it takes faith to trust in Yahweh Shai. And to believe he's going to intervene. Bear me just a minute. Every time I try to look for this scripture, Bear me just a minute. There it is. Said Corinthians. Turn. And where was it? Three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. So we're walking in this flesh, obviously, because we're in carnal bodies. But we're not warming after the flesh. Because the flesh leads to death. So if you're, if you're walking after the spirit, you're not going to be trying to take up arms against the government. You're not going to try to what? Gather together some black militia. Because you're not going to win. That's walking in, in the flesh. That's being carnal. Let's continue. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So what's the weapon? This word. This word is doing damage. That's why when we read these words, all types of destruction is happening. Just through this. We don't need arms. We don't need that military. And we have a military, but it's a spiritual military. All right? Weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. So how are we putting down these strongholds? How are we putting down, to, what's a stronghold? A barrier, a fortification, this man's system. So how are we pulling down this system? How are we pulling down this fortification? Jesus is negro no blanco. No Diablo. Okay. So how are we pulling down this kingdom? How are we pulling down this system? Through the word. Through this word. That's why it says these words are mighty. To the pulling down of strongholds. Alright? And the strongholds also is what a mind. Before we came into this truth. We have particular strongholds, and them strongholds were what? Demons. Strongholds are also demons. The lies, the deception, that, that was them strongholds. So how do we pull them down, down them strongholds? The system and the strongholds on your mind. Through the words. And every high thing, but exerted itself against the knowledge of the Most High. Okay? So everything that exerts of itself, it's going to be brought down. Everything. So it behooves you to um, take the low seat. Okay? Not seek for a high position in this kingdom. Because it says every high thing that exerted itself shall be brought down so it'd be wise to take the long seat right that would be wise if believe you the only thing that's exalted is going to be brought down low it's the pulling down of strongholds see how we're pulling down their values okay we're pulling down them, we're pulling down them lies. And what not better way to do it by this word? That's how we're putting on the strongholds. That's how we're putting on the lies. That's how we're putting down the deception. And where else? And bring it into captivity every thought. So the scriptures, 
They're bringing people's thoughts into captivity. That's why you may get different reactions. That's why you get different reactions when you're out here. Yeah, guess what? We're reading the minds of people through these words. Okay. We are reading the minds of the people through these words. And their every thought, just through these words alone. So I always say we don't need to stay up late at night, okay, study you. We don't need to do all that. The word studies you. One five minute video, that's enough to, to, to study your whole psyche. We let the scriptures study you. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So that's what he wants to do. Revenge all disobedience. And through us, what is through chastisement? See so what we become better. Okay. So we're done with that. And that's what your has come to do when he cracks them clothes. Job 20. The triumph of the wicked is short. So Esau's little triumph thing, his little hoorah, his little celebration, scripture says that's short. Only for a brief time. And the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. And Esau's a hypocrite. And his joy is just for a moment. Remember, he's only got a little short time to rule. Well, His Excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds. So what's that? That's indicative of Esau and his pride. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. So Esau's no perish. What's done? Like shit. All right. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? So that's what we're going to be saying. Where is this man? Where is he gone? Okay. Esau's going to be what? A thing of the past. Esau's going to be what? A distant memory. All right. That's all, that's all Esau's going to be. A distant memory. A thing of the past, okay, to be spoken about. All right. Ray, which I've seen him, shall say, where is he? They're going to be searching for him. Where is he? Where is this man? Where is that wicked man that was ruling, ruling the earth? That's what they're going to be saying. <laughs> All right. He shall fly away as a dream, as a distant memory. You know when you have a dream and you can't remember it? That's how Esau's going to be. He's going to be what? A fig of naught. That's what you got to understand. That's why the scripture says, fret not because of evil doers. Esau's going to be done away with very soon. All right? He shall not be found. Yeah, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. This man's going to be driven out. Okay. Just like, he, just like when he was driven out in Job 30, when he was driven forth from amongst men. Just like the base man he is. 
right? The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place behold him. Not any more behold him. Okay, America. He's going to be taken out of that land. Israel, he's going to be taken out of that land. Right? His children shall seek to please the poor. And his hand shall restore their goods. So everything Esau has, he's going to restore that. All the things he's stolen, he's going to restore that. Everything. And the rest of it's just going to get burnt up by missiles. So we're on verse 11. His clothes are full of the sin of his youth. Going back to what came. Alright. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. Going back to Cain. And what was Cain? A murderer. Esau's a murderer. That's why the elites, they can go around killing people, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the rest of the banking families. And just get away with it. Esau is a mass murderer. Beginning with Cain. We shall lie down with him in the dust, in other words, in the grave. No wickedness be sweet in his mouth. No he hide it under his tongue. For this man is always in his mouth. Wickedness is always in his mouth. It's just hidden. It's just subtle. It's just subtle with it, but it's always there. So if wickedness is always in his mouth, that means it's always in his mind. Because it starts within the mind. Bro, he stir it not and forsake it. Not, but keep it still within his mouth. So it's always there. Right? Next, his meat, his, his bowels. Is heard in gallop of as within him. Okay? Like a snake. When a snake has some prey, it throws it up. Alright? It throws it throws it up. Yet his mat, his meat is in his brows, his turn it is the gal of us within him. Gal is poison. So everything this devil does, this snake that his serpent does, is deceit, is poison. In other words, this man cannot be trusted. He speaks lies. Alright? That's all he speaks lies. Alright? Oh, he spare it and forsake it not. It is, it is it's meat within his bowels. His turret, it is gal of asps within him. He have swallowed our riches. So all the riches that the so-called white people had, yeah, they swallowed it down. But guess what? Just like a snake, when it's when a snake actually throws up his prey. If it's too large for it. Okay. Has them toxins break it down. That's what happens. Okay. Where was that? You have swallowed our riches. Okay, you on your side. You didn't hear what I said. Okay, you on your side. Anyways, yeah, you shall swallow it down. Okay, he's gonna throw it back up. Okay, lot of, I'm telling you, there's a lot of northern tribes down here. And guess what? A lot of them, a lot of them, you may, they look like Edomites, but they're not, they're not. A lot of them. A lot of Argentinians, Colombians, okay, and it ain't just a, oh, you just got to marry a woman that has to be a Jew, that no. You've got 12 tribes. And the Northern tribe women, they're hella fine. But anyway, let's stick to the fight. See what I mean? That's distraction. That's distraction. A, a couple of women have caught my eye, but you know what? Let's stay, let's stay on the ball, okay? Bear me just a minute. Northern tribe women are hella fine, I'm telling you. Be looking like Cameron Diaz and all sorts. Okay, bear me just a minute. 
Anyways, man, we, we gotta look. We're gonna get all that in the kingdom, but we need to stay focused. Okay, us as men, we have particular, you know, needs, but you know, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep it scriptural. All right, let's get back to the point. Okay, we're gonna get that in due time. Okay, remember what it says: seven, um, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's gonna happen in the kingdom. Okay, stop worrying about all that right now. Okay, you don't receive that, but we gotta be patient. Okay, we gotta be patient. All right, bear me just a minute. Is that a hornet? Yeah, that's a. Hold on. Yeah, that's a hornet. That's some type of yeah. Okay, even the hornets are listening to what I'm saying. Okay, and the scripture says when a man's ways, even the beast shall be at peace with it. You on this side? Now nah, she's ignored. She ignored me. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of these women here, they, they stack up as well. You know, full of themselves. So. All right. But well, what was I saying anyway? Bear this with it. He has swallowed down riches. So Esau, he swallowed down all of these riches. But you shall vomit them up again, just like a snake vomits his prey up. Okay. The master shall cast them out of his belly. Let's go to James. Baba Kusha. to know you rich men and weak. So who are the rich men of the society? Esau, Liam, okay, and weak. So the elites, they're going to be weeping. Because that's a whole lot, yeah, they, got, they have a whole lot of riches. But the riches are going to be what? Gone. Okay, in a blink of an eye. Okay. And howl for your miseries. So when you're howling, what you're, you're, you're lamenting, okay? You're wailing. That's what he's just gonna be doing, okay? He's gonna be howling. All right? That shall come upon you, and then miseries are gonna come all of a sudden, all right? Oh, you gotta love doing this. You gotta be very optimistic about pushing this word. You got, you gotta have that spirit. Because if you're not, what's gonna happen? You're gonna just fall out. You gotta be, you gotta be excited, man. You know, you gotta have a little bit of pep in your step. Baby, just a minute. I'm just lighting up my incense. That's how you gotta be with this truth. Okay, we have the victory through your shine. We already have the victory. Okay. We already know the outcome of Esau's kingdom. Okay? We already know. So that should bring you great joy, great comfort. All right? And you've got these fire brigades. Okay? And that's scriptural because, boy, it's going to be a great fire in Babylon. It's going to be a great fire in America. Great old fire. So yeah, your riches are corrupted. Because you got this what? You got this earth of what? Rob, robbery, murder, stealing, right? So this way it's gonna go down the same way. Okay, you can't go around doing wickedness but expect a good result. It's only gonna end one way. Right? And your garments, moth-eaten. 
Because the garments, what they eat, they eat what? Well, it's like the moss in your clothing. So that's what's going to happen. Okay? That's why you have a shot saying it's going to nothing. Then it's just a minute. treasures upon earth. That's why we're not trying to stack up here. We're not trying to save anything here. Because you can't even take, you're not even taking this flesh with you. Not even flesh and blood is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. and still, they can still, anything you got, any given time, okay, any given moment, they can't steal your knowledge, they can't steal what you've laid up, okay, they can't steal your talents that Yahweh has given you, alright, they can't steal none of these things, right, yeah. they can't steal none of that, But lay it for yourself, treasures in heaven, where neither rust, nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through, nor stool, which we just spoke of. Well, that's what we're laying up. That's what's going to last. Everything else is going to perish. When this kingdom's done, it's the world that's going to abound. That's going to be the only thing that abounds. When everything else falls, that's what's going to abound. Your car ain't going to abound. Your woman may not abound. Your family may not abound. Okay. But what will abound is this word. If you have a, a more sure word of prophecy. Okay, now let's go to Peter. Speaking of that. See if we can find it. Bear me just a minute, Akiam. We have that sure more word. Of prophecy. Come on. Ever is very just a minute, very just a minute. Ever is second Peter's one and nineteen. We have a more sure. It's a sure. It doesn't say unsure. It doesn't say um we don't know. We have a more We have a more sure word of prophecy. So again, be sure. It's a confident word of prophecy. Once you know the prophecies, you're sure of them. We're not unsure. A more sure words of prophecy. Where unto you do well. We have to take heed. So now we know these prophecies, we've got to take heed to these prophecies. Right? As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. And Yahweh is that light that was shining that light that was shining in a dark place. I'm not bringing forth that light that shines in a dark place, which is this world. 
we're declaring the light. Some people take to the light, some people don't. You know? Just like, just like when it's early and you turn on the light, some people are going to be like, oh no! Like spiritual vampires. But those that are of the light are going to receive the light. Those that are of darkness are not going to receive the light. Because they love darkness. They love wickedness. They're comfortable with homosexuality. They're comfortable with LGBT. They're comfortable with little boys getting fucked in the Catholic Church. The people are comfortable with that. The people, they don't, they don't have a problem with that. But that's why Yahabasha is only looking for a few good men that are going to what, speak up against the truth. Well, you know what? You phrase, I don't want to say good men because even Yahabasha says, none of them is good. Not one of us is good. Okay, and you notice as soon as I said that, they had to close the windows. Okay? These people, they're not about truth. They're about lies. Okay, but that's what we came to do, to pass that down. Okay, and to give you reality. We came to give you reality, not lies. Shutting your windows, that's good. Shut your windows. Let that be a condemnation to you. Okay? Knowing this, first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So there's no prophecy, this whole thing about, oh, what, well, what do you believe? What's your breakdown? No, there's no private interpretation. You don't make up your own interpretation. There's only one. There's only one interpretation. There's only one breakdown. There's not, there's not, there's not five, six ways to break it down. There's only one. For the prophecy came not in old time, but by the will of men. Spiritual men, holy men. Alright? Holy men. But holy men of the most high spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. These men they were moved by the Holy Spirit to do great work, to do great things. To minister for your shine. And you have to be moved. They were inspired. Come on high. The only, the only how you could do this work is be, being inspired by your Habashai. That's the only way. Okay? That is the only way. Through the letter of the law, what worthy of death? Through the worthy for the letter of the law, 
But through the Spirit, through walking in the Spirit, guess what you'll gain? Life! Through the Spirit! See the beautiful thing about this? So if you're doing what's according to the Spirit, guess what? You're giving life! Okay? Mercy! Right? But if the ministration of death written and engraving in stones, which is what? The laws which you are what and what? The stones. Okay. Which was given to Moses. Was glorious so that the people of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses. Why? Because the glory of Moses, it was upon the children of Israel. It was too much for them. Alright? It was way too much for them. Right? Of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of spirit be more rather glorious? And they've been given this ministration, ministration through the spirit, through Yahabashai, which is more glorious. Okay. of condemnation be glory much more okay and that was through the law much more of the ministry ministration of righteousness exceeding glory so how does it exceeding glory through you have a shine that's how we have this ministration of righteousness through you have a shine not so much for through the letter of the law that will condemnation because we could not keep it. But if that which was done away was glorious much more, that which remained of his glory. Seeing then that we have such 